um, but I'm going to show you a few little rendering techniques to beef up your drawing a little bit. Since this is a graphic drawing, all the shadows look pretty good with these hard edged um, shadow shapes, really sharp edge. And you can leave it like that. And it actually, it actually looks really nice like this. But if you want to get things to look a little bit more rounded off, get a little more 3D feel, you can take your blending brush, and that's this little double droplet icon here. You put a blend, and you can blend away some of these forms, and that'll round off the shadows a bit. But because I really like the graphic shapes, I don't want to overdo it. Otherwise, it's going to start losing its charm, and we start to cross over to realism territory. So we try to find that happy balance. Um, but yeah, we can go through this whole picture, just rendering things out, getting these nice forms. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is locking transparency. So we have all of these layers with all of these different colors for a reason. So that we can, number one, be able to change up the colors of each individual object. Number two, so we're going to lock the transparency and, then, and it's this transparency symbol with a lock on it. So I'm going to go straight to the jacket. I'm going to add some tones. I'm going to use a slightly darker color and brush in these, these shadow shapes here. Now, if you wanted to adjust those colors so that they're not so blue, well, you can't really do that anymore uh, because it's on that layer. But if you wanted to have the ability to change it, we can do it on another layer and we'll make that clipped down to that jacket layer. So now this layer is subordinate to the, sh the jacket layer only, and it's, it's going to be clipped to that. So whatever we put down, we can later adjust it. So I'm going to click on the green and slightly darken it in a very subtle, let's get this subtly darker green. So you can see we're starting to, again, cross over to that more realistic te territory where things look a little more rounded off, a little more 3D. And then I can go in later. So this more saturated green. If I want to turn down the saturation a bit, I can. There we go. A little less saturated so it's not so green. I'm going to brush it away. And this just gives us a little bit of tone so that it's not completely flat. And you can decide how far, how dark, and how rendered you want it to look. And that just comes with experience and practice. A part of me wants to leave it as more graphic. So we start losing that graphic feel. Part of me wants to make it more realistic for the sake of realism. And it does catch the eye a little bit when things look slightly realistic. But the same can be said for more stylized 2D stuff. Things are done really well. It all depends on your own preference. And that's how I would create some shadows. All right, let's talk about some gradients. So another thing you can do for gradients. So let's lock the transparency of the pants. So that's just not one flat tone. And let's say you want it to make it slightly dark on the bottom and as it goes to the top it gets brighter because that's the intensity of the light is slightly brighter at the top and it starts to fade away at, um, at the bottom so using our soft airbrush we can click on this shadow color here just add some slightly darker tones on the bottom and that's enough to give it that nice that nice gradient where it looks like light is slightly dark at the top and you can do that with the jacket you can do the shoes the hair you can do it in reverse so for the hair we can lock the transparency and choose the hair color and go slightly brighter this time so that it's slightly brighter around the center here and that gives it a nice glow. And for our shadow, our shadow underneath, let's lock this. We can lock this and we can add a gradient using our gradient tool. We don't have my gradient bound to anything. I don't really use the gradient tool that much, but it's this little box with this, this gradient shape here. And this goes foreground to transparent. So this is the foreground color and it'll go to the transparent. So right now it's on brown so it should go from brown to blue so the blue blue area means the area that it doesn't touch if you go this way it should go brown in that way so um we can select the white background or a lighter color of the of the blue and go in this direction and that'll fade out the shadow a bit and the longer stretch the less intense it is and that's just a simple way of adding large gradients uh, this is for the square pattern or linear pattern, and there's more circular, radial pattern. You want a circle like this so it emanates. And you can do it by different ellipses. I think I like that graphic shape like that, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, next, let's move on to highlights. So I want to create another layer above everything again and clip that layer down. 
and we can add in highlights directly above everything using a brighter color like this. That's one way. Another way is to add it through color dodge. So choosing a color slightly darker and warm. What this does is kind of the opposite of multiply. Instead of doubling colors, it brightens whatever color that's underneath in a more warmer or, or hotter temperature. So whatever color it is, well, it depends on what color you use. So if I use green, it kind of gives you kind of a greenish glow. Um, but the color that I want is kind of a desaturated brownish red to give us this kind of warm light source. Since our shadows are cooler, using kind of a warmer light source is nice. So there's many ways we can add in our shadow colors. We can do like little dots like that. It's nice. You can do like little lines like this. You can do a combination of both. That's that's nice too. Um, some people like to simplify it even more than that just by doing like a line, a line shape. Some people like to do little little zigzags, zigzags. So I, I prefer to do it more of a dotted kind of line, maybe a combination. Again, you just gotta play with it and see what you guys prefer. And since we are going with a more graphic shape, we wanna kind of keep it semi-simple. And you can also change the colors of the highlights by locking the transparency. If you wanted to create a gradient within the highlights, you can. You can change the color around here and lock the transparency and just graze over it in areas like this so that they're less warm. So it can emanate a little bit more warm towards the center here. And you can also play with different blending modes. Add glow also works really nicely to compare, undo, redo. So either way, either way works really nicely. We'll put some highlights right in the eyes. You can put highlights above the eyes like this and hit this whole area here. And that's how you would add highlights. Also, I'm gonna go over some I don't know, flush tones. So with a gradient brush, I'm gonna go in here. Let's go slightly more orange, a little bit more rosy. I'm changing the hues by tapping these arrows and I have more control over it by kind of tapping it as opposed to sliding it left and right for the lips, maybe a bit for the hands. It can be kind of cold outside. Well, don't forget the highlights for Doggo. Let's get some highlights for Doggo here. Beady eyes for Doggo. Oh, and also the leaves. Don't forget some highlights for the leaves. These highlights for the leaves. A few veins on the leaves. And maybe a little bit of highlight here because it can be that material. It depends on what material the object is for it to be shiny. So I wouldn't put that highlight onto the pants because it's more of a denim type of material. I can't put it on a jacket, but I think it's gonna be that kind of jacket. So just limit it to that. I'm gonna blend it away a little bit. And again, for the sense of demonstration, we wanna try to keep things a little simple and manageable. And then lastly, I wanna add a highlight into the eye, but have it also affect the lines. So having it as a blending mode, you'll see that it doesn't quite make the, uh, the lines completely white. So I'm gonna create another layer and set that to really bright white and make that the highlight layer, the specular highlight layer. So you notice how the, the color goes right over the line. So anything I go over, it just goes over completely opaque. Maybe brighten up some areas here. A little bit more speckles right there. Some sparkly eyes. Oh, maybe some highlights right here. This would be nice. Let's make sure that it can be seen. For these zippers, you can just have one highlight across the edge here that gives it a bump some thickness and then slightly get thinner and I suggest the, the teeth of the zip, zippers there we go so again if you wanted to pick up the color you can go to the color history or you can double tap your eyedropper tool it'll go through the different eye drops so mine is set to E I'm not sure if that's the default I have my eyedropper set to E and then I can pick up the exact highlight color that I want. It feels a little overdone that area. Yeah, sometimes this rendering stuff is just a little out of place. It looks nice, but again, you gotta find that happy balance. I think so, a little bit for the buttons here. The buttons are shiny. There we go. At this stage, you can just go in and polish up areas uh, where I feel that needs to be a little more cleaned up, a little bit more rendered, but that's pretty much it for this. So that's pretty much it for the essentials to Clip Studio Paint. These techniques are techniques that I still use today and a lot of advanced artists use it. 
um, the exact same process. This technique is only limited to your imagination. You can take it as far as you want to go and go into crazy, crazy detail. But this really is a great uh, starting point. So take it, run with it, practice. I'm Jetty Jet, and you can follow me on all my socials at The Jetty Jet Show. But until next time, take care. And as I always like to say, bada, bap, boom, pieces.